What's up, fuggers? Today, we got a new expansion revealed by the Hearthstone team, but before we get into that, if you want to be a fugger, subscribe to my channel down below, and while you're down there, drop a like and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my new content, which I release every week. It's absolutely free and painless to subscribe, and you can always unsubscribe later, so please, every single one of you who subscribes helps me a ton, and I really appreciate it. What's up, fuckers? Alright guys, today the new expansion was revealed and with it a ton of cards, so let's just jump into card reviews real quick because there's a lot of these to get through. Now this first card here, Climactic Necrotic Explosion, is a new Tri-Rune card for Death Knight and a legendary spell. And a 10 mana spell. There's a lot of crazy things going on here. It's kind of hard to say whether or not this is going to be good because it is a very impactful card. It's a legendary spell, but it is 10 mana. It's kind of hard to really pay for that, especially for a class like Death Knight, which as we've seen likes to play cheaper, more flexible cards in an aggro shell more than it likes to play control decks. Blood Death Knight is a deck, but it is underperforming compared to other Death Knight decks. Now, I think this has potential because it's very strong, especially if you've spent a lot of corpses. It's just really good. But the problem is, in Tri-Rune, there's actually not a lot of really good ways to spend corpses. I've tried to make Tri-Rune work, and while it works pretty well, or at least it did before they nerfed the location, I, that was really holding it up a lot, so from what I remember, it, I might have played that before the location came out. But anyway, um, this is really expensive, it's really not enough to make that work and you don't have good ways to spend corpses, I'm not really entirely sold on this card right now. Now, in the future, we might get enough support to make this really good, but right now it just looks like it's falling short because you don't have those corpse spenders, so you, you're just ending up with a really mediocre spell at the end of the day, and you want this to look like something like Ultimate Infestation. I just realized I forgot to actually read the card. It's going to go ahead and deal 5 damage with lifesteal, and summon two 1-1 one, one souls at a base, but then the card is randomly improved for each corpse you spend, so that's going to mean for each corpse you spend, it adds one to either the number of souls or the amount of damage. I do not believe it can increase the stats of the souls. This next card for Death Knight here is the first of a series of harmonic cards. I don't believe we got any other ones in this set of reveals, but we did get Harmonic Metal, which says give four random minions in your hand plus two plus two. So that's more of that Blood Rune support for hand buff that we've been seeing before, but this one interestingly can actually go in a deck with some of those Unholy Rune cards that really benefit from being hand buffed. So this one I think is actually one to look out for. And on the other half of it, which it swaps every turn, that's part of the effect, it has give two random minions in your hand plus four plus four, which is an insane hand buff. And when your hand is kind of small, you don't actually have enough minions for the full four minions. That's gonna be a lot better for you. And sometimes you just want to take a risk because plus four plus four on a very specific minion can be really impactful. So this looks like a really good card to me, and especially if you're going to hit something like Nerubian Swarm Guard, which I believe is two Unholy Runes, which means you can run these together. That's just an insane recipe for some crazy combos. All right, the next card up here is Arcanite Ripper. Now, I really like this card because of the pun, obviously, but also it actually looks pretty strong. This has Death Rattle, summon a 1 1 Lifesteal Undead, and then it says change your health on your turn while equipped to improve. So, what that means is whenever you heal with healing or lifesteal, mostly lifesteal is what Death Knight likes to do, or you take damage on your turn using a weapon such as this then you're gonna get a bigger lifesteal undead out of this weapon. So what that means is you can potentially get up to like a 6-6 pretty reasonably with this card. 
as your death rattle. That's coming out turn four at the earliest. That's insane value if you can manage to swing that. A 6-6 six, six, turn four is a really strong. We know that from cards like Rat Trap of the past that allowed you to get stuff like that out early. Also, even lock a little bit more threatening with eight eights but it's a similar scenario so i do believe that this is going to be really strong if you have those enablers if not it could fall a little bit short but i think that it's gonna get there all right our next card here is screaming banshee another card for death knight this one says lifesteal after your hero gains health summon a soul with that much attack and health so what that means is whenever you're gaining health, say you use, um, what is it called? Death Strike, I think? So say you use Death Strike. That deals six damage to a minion and heals you for six, assuming you have six health taken. You can summon a 6-6 six, six with this minion by doing that. Now, granted, that is a nine mana combo. Not going to happen very often in games, but... Maybe you tempo this out, a 5 mana 3-6 is pretty bad stat, so I'm thinking that's not gonna happen very often. It is a Blood Rune card, I did miss that before I didn't say that, I mean, I, I, I missed covering it, I did know that. But, it's a 1 Blood Rune card, so you can play it in a Blood deck, you play it with Vampiric Blood, that's pretty good. 7 mana for a 10-10, now we're talking about a little bit more value of a play. But that's still 7 mana, and on your 7 mana turns, you're trying to play stuff like Mutanus or Patchwork. Granted, Mutanus is leaving, so you're not playing that anymore, but the point is you're trying to play stuff like Mograin. Mograin is another good example of a big 7 drop you want to be playing then. Is a 3-6 and a 10-10 as big of a value play as something like that? Is it enough tempo? Is it enough stats? Will it actually overwhelm your opponents? These are the questions you need to be asking when you're thinking about including a card like this, and I really just think this card is underwhelming. At 5 mana, 3-6, it just does not seem like enough. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe the fact that there's a 5-2 weapon with lifesteal in Death Knight, maybe that does something. I haven't thought it all the way through, like that curves nicely into this, 6 mana for the weapon, 5 mana for this, and you can play Vampiric Blood. That gets you a really nice board of a 5-5, five, five, a 10-10, ten, ten, and a 3-6. So maybe something happens there. I'm not entirely ruling it out, but I don't think this card is going to be that good. I think Death Knight just has better things to be doing. Next up here for Priest, we have a new Legendary, Heartbreaker Hedonis. Now, this card looks pretty insane to me. It's a 4 mana 4 8 with Battle Cry, deal 4 damage to this minion, and Overheal, deal 5 damage to a random enemy. Now, Overheal is a new keyword, and that's going to be pretty much self explanatory. It's whenever you heal more than a minion's full health to it, that effect is going to trigger. So, what this means for this card is that whenever you heal it above its max health it's going to deal five damage to a random enemy so that's similar to a card we've seen before dragon bane except that was going off whenever you hero power this is going off whenever you overheal it now that first overheal is kind of hard priest mostly heals for three health increments so getting that five health increment isn't super easy they do have flash heal stuff like that binding heal in uh wild but not that common of a breakpoint. I think Circle of Healing, actually. Cir no, Circle of Healing's four, so that's going to not, not be enough either. So, this card, currently, as it stands, it's kind of hard to proc immediately. It's kind of hard to get too many procs on it, because it needs to take damage again to keep going off. But a card like this is insane for the design space because of the fact that it is there now. Which means moving down the line at some point, I guarantee you there's going to be a card for Priest that's printed by the design team that they don't see coming, that interacts with this in a way that just destroys your opponent by spamming 5 damage pings, and it's going to be hilarious. All right, next up here, we got a new location for Priest. That's pretty exciting, new locations. We didn't get those last expansion, so pretty nice. Well, unless you count the mini set. But we get Fan Club. Restore three health to all friendly characters. 
like I was just saying, Priest mostly gets increments of 3 healing. This is a great example of that. This is a gift of the Naru. You don't draw a card. You do get two of them, though, for the price of one. You can't play them turn after turn, obviously. It's a location. We know the rules of locations by this point. But... This is a very strong card for some sort of Tempo Priest deck. That deck has actually been successful recently is the crazy thing because Nagas, Undead, they actually successfully make Tempo in Priest a viable game plan. They are good enough. That means that a card like this is actually looking pretty juicy and kind of scary right now because this is the kind of card those decks love. This card is definitely going to create some frustrating moments for you where you're trying to clear your opponent's board, but they have this location down and it's coming up next turn and you just can't finish off their minions, so you can't attack into them because you know they're just going to heal right back up. And it creates these high friction moments because they're just going to trade on their turn and heal their minions back up. So what do you do? You, j you just get as much face damage as you can, but a lot of the time that's just not really that good especially against priest who heals their own face and importantly this is also healing three damage to your hero so they're not even ignoring their face when they use this to heal their board this one to me looks like an insane card and it's definitely one to keep an eye on next up here we have our first finale card power cord synchronize what this card does is you choose a minion and add a copy of it to your hand so seance of old but it has finale, give both copies, plus one, plus two. So both the minion you chose on the board and the one in your hand. That's pretty insane value. Now how finale works is if it's the last card you play and it spends all of your mana, that effect goes off. So it's kind of hard to make work sometimes, especially in a class like Priest that's typically floating a lot of mana, but when you can make it work, it's really powerful. I think the more important aspect of this card, though, is just that Priest is getting access to Seance again in Standard. And also, this is a Holy card, so if that matters for any sort of decks, I don't think it does. I think it only means that it can't be played in Shadow Priest, as far as I know. But maybe in the future that becomes really important for Priest, that this is holy. So that is something to consider too. Next up here we have our Rogue Guards. The first one of which is a new weapon for Rogue. A 3 mana 2-2 two -two weapon that has Death Rattle, Refresh 1 mana crystal, play combo cards well equipped to improve. So what Record Scratcher does is it enables you to have some insane pop-off turns. You think about how Druid used Twig when it was in Standard to just refresh their mana and play two turns at once. Now, obviously nowadays that's useless because you have a card like Guff, but in Rogue you don't have access to stuff like that. You do have access to a lot of really good combo stuff like the Location, Edwin, stuff like that. So you really want to pop off with a lot of mana sometimes in Rogue, and this is really going to help do that. Now... I don't know if Gadget Sand Auctioneer is sticking around, or even if it is in core right now, I honestly can't remember. But if Gadget Sand is an option, this card is probably going to be insane, because historically Rogue is really able to take advantage of that whenever they have extra mana to work with. For instance, during the Gadget Sand meta, when Counterfeit Coin was a card, it was really easy to pop off with Gadget Sand because of that extra mana. I definitely think this is going to be a good card and probably a staple for at least one archetype and potentially even make a new deck in standard. Next up here we have Beatboxer and this is just a really good 3 drop, honestly. I see this card and I think, wow, SI7 agent is destroyed at this point. Like, we already have so many 3 mana 3-3s three that deal 2 damage now as neutrals. So SI7 agent already felt kind of bad, but now? This beatboxer is insane, and I mean it's random, but it's 4 damage. That's a lot of damage. And when your opponent just has a few small threats, this can just be an insane board clear. And all you need to do is combo it. And it's a 3 mana 4 3. It's not even a 3 3. It has good stats for the cost. Granted, they're aggressive, and typically that's not nearly as good, but Hearthstone's gotten so fast these days that aggressively statted minions are actually performing better. 
statistically in Rogue and other aggressive classes like it, you want your minions to be as attack heavy as possible. Three ones are really good now. Back in the day in Angoro, there was a 3-1 with Wind Fury for Shaman that saw no play. Granted, that was because it overloaded you for two. It was pretty bad value if it got removed ever. You basically forfeited a game. But still, it just goes to show how much faster the game has got. So overall, I think this card is really good and it will probably see play in some sort of tempo deck in Rogue. And it might even see play in more face-oriented decks like Odd Rogue and Wild. Next up here, we have our first Soloist minion, Opera Soloist. This is for Warlock. It's a 5-mana 4-6 demon that says a battle cry. If you control no other minions, deal 3 damage to all minions. Now, that's going to be the gimmick for Soloists, is if you control no other minions. So, kind of like that 3-mana 2-4 from Kobolds and Catacombs. His name is escaping me at the moment. Templar Knight or something? Lone Champion, that was his name, Lone Champion. I was way off. But anyway, yeah, that guy, he had a similar effect. Now, though, you're getting way better effects than Divine Shield and Taunt on a poorly statted minion. I mean, this minion is still isn't great stats, but a 4-6 for 5 is a lot better than a 2-4 for 3, because the proportion of stats you're taking away is just lower at that mana cost. It's just basic math. But... The Opera Soloist also has this battle cry that clears the opponent's board. Now, it isn't symmetrical, but that I don't think that matters because of the fact that it needs to be played by itself. Because of the fact that this needs you to have a clear board to play it, there's just never going to be scenarios where it matters that it's not symmetrical. So, that's not really even a plus here. But it is a 3 damage AoE, which is pretty on curve for 5 mana. So this looks pretty strong. It's not quite as good as Abyssal Wave, but it is on a body, so that's important to know. And it is a demon, so if there's any kind of synergy with demons, like making them cheaper or anything like that, this will definitely be better. Next up here is another demon for Warlock, and this guy to me is kind of interesting because we've only ever seen this effect on a neutral 3-mana 4-3 a long time ago, Violet Illusionist, or Malganus, a legendary demon for Warlock, who was 9-mana. Now, the neutral minion was 3-mana and had this exact same effect. Malganus makes you immune always, which is obviously much stronger of an effect, which is why he's 9-mana, also with stats. But this is very interesting to me because... A 1-mana one 1-3 one, demon that makes your hero immune during your turn is just such a flexible card, and there's so many high-damaging removal cards in Warlock that you can't afford to play because they just damage you so much. This makes them actually accessible to control Warlock decks, which is going to make Reno Lock, I think, a lot stronger and wild with this card. Now, you do only get one copy of this card, so it's not a ton stronger, but it definitely makes some cards more viable to run, because you just can't run them at the moment, because of the times that they just sit in your hand being dead cards against aggro matchups, where you can't afford to take the damage. Now you can play this card first and negate that damage, so you can play them against aggro decks that you're trying to target while also having these strong removal cards against control decks where you don't care about losing the health. Overall, I think this guy is going to be pretty strong. I don't think he's insane, but I do think he is an inclusion in certain decks. But also, one notable thing about this is that it provides a cheap way to make your hero immune on your turn. Which, if any of you remember when Stealer of Souls was released, that was the main thing you were trying to abuse with it. What this means to me is that there is literally no way that Stealer of Souls makes it to wild with the same effect or even a similar effect. Because this card exists, unless it's like the next two cards that you draw cost health instead of mana as a battle cry, there's just no way. All right, that was the last of the cards for the classes that got multiple cards. Now on to the single cards. First up here is a Druid card. A 1-mana one 1-1 one, one called Peaceful Piper that says choose one, draw a beast, or discover one. 
Now, what's really cool about this card is what, that it takes that flexibility that Choose One always offers and turns it into a really flexible tutor card because this card says draw a beast for one mana. That's really broken. But what about when you already drew your beast? Well, you can discover one. And that makes this just a really insane tutor. You can tutor a single beast in a deck. You can play this in a Hadronox Druid to tutor Hadronox, and it's actually a good card because even when you draw Hadronox, you get to discover a beast. Now, is discovering a beast that strong? Probably not. The pool is pretty huge, but it is better than just being a one mana one one, and so that definitely makes it a strong card, in my opinion. Now, is this the strongest card of the set? Obviously not. It's a one mana one one. I mean, I guess that could be the strongest card of a set. Like, it's pretty obvious that that could be when I think about it. I mean, Mean Streets had patches. It's obvious that this is a strong card. It's a one-mana tutor, just like any of them. Just like that one we just got in the mini set for Hunter. It slots into a lot of decks because it's versatile and flexible, but it's not going to be the centerpiece because it's just a powerful card that does what it's supposed to do really well, but it doesn't win you games on its own. Next up here we have Brass Elemental, a 4-mana 3-3 for Shaman. Now if you're looking at this card and saying, huh, that kind of looks familiar, that's because this is basically Corpse Taker, but without all the extra steps. Now, you lose Lifesteal, but in return you get Rush, which to me seems like a pretty great deal. And you also get the Elemental Tag. This is a crazy deal compared to Corpse Taker. This is just a way better card. And it's just insane how far we've come since Lich King. Especially since the last expansion we just had was Lich King Inspired. And just comparing the newer cards to the cards from that expansion, it's insane. Obviously the Death Knights still hold up, at least some of them do. But, like, a lot of the cards are just underwhelming compared to modern cards now. Now, the craziest part of this is that I think this card is good, but I don't even think it's, like, insane. I just think this card is, like, a decent mid-range card. I do think it's good with that Stoneborn card that makes your elementals cheaper. I think it's definitely going to be good in the elemental deck. But outside of that, it's just, like, a mediocre mid-range card. Like, it's pretty good for removing a couple things. It's, like, always going to get to take two trades, so it's probably good in some kind of control deck. But, like... I don't know if there's a good Control Shaman. I don't know if that's a good deck. Like, if it's not a good deck, there's no reason to be playing this, because you're probably not going to play this in mid-range. I mean, maybe you do. It has Wind Fury. Maybe it sticks around and is a threat. Maybe you just take off one threat off the board with it and don't use the Wind Fury with the Rush. But, like... I don't know. I just don't see it. A 4-mana 3-3 is pretty low stats, even with Wind Fury. We just got Goldwing for Paladin. That card feels pretty strong, but it doesn't feel bonkers, and it's a 4-mana 3-5. I mean, granted, it doesn't have Divine Shield, but when you're just sticking it as a threat, it's just, like, it has more health than this. I mean, I guess Divine Shield and 2 health are about the same value, but still, the point is, like, I don't know how much better this is. Although, I guess when you just tempo this, it has Divine Shield. It's pretty hard to remove. Maybe there's something there. Alright, next up here, we have a very interesting legendary spell for Paladin, Starlight Groove. Now, what this one does is it's a holy spell that says, Give your hero Divine Shield. For the rest of the game, whenever you cast a holy spell, refresh it. Now... This is an insane card, and one that people have been making on Custom Hearthstone for a long time, so hopefully sometime soon people can go ahead and stop suggesting it, because now it exists. Anyway, it is very in flavor for Paladins to get Divine Shield on their hero. It is definitely something I've thought about before, too. I don't know if I've ever made a Custom Hearthstone card for it, but I've definitely thought about ideas for it. And this is pretty much the best idea I've seen for implementing it, so it's pretty cool that this is the card that actually made it into the game. Whenever you cast a holy spell, you get a new divine shield, so you get to take a hit from whatever minion hits you in the face, whatever spell. That can be insane sometimes. Obviously, most of the time, you're just saving 1 to 2 health. But sometimes, you're going against someone who only plays big minions, like, say, even lock and wild. You go against an even lock with this, boom, every turn, shut out 8 damage from one of their giants. They get the Wind Fury guy, 
you're sitting there with Cariel up with this active. You don't even care. You take, what is that, 12 damage from three hits of 8-8s. Eight the fourth one is just negated entirely. It's insane. It's insanity. This card is pretty fucking nuts. Next up here, we have our free legendary, 4 mana 4-4, four, four, ETC Band Manager. Now, this card is pretty cool. Pretty freaking cool here. This guy gives you a sideboard in your deck. Now, obviously, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. It's not entirely the same thing as a sideboard, obviously, but it's as close as Hearthstone has gotten so far, and a lot of people are excited for this because in other card games, you can sideboard cards so that when you run into something like a certain meta deck that has a certain combo that needs to be disrupted with a counter spell, well, you don't have to hard run that card in your deck. Instead, you just sideboard it so that when you go into game two, because most other card games do best of three formats. When you head into game two, you can pull it out of your sideboard and completely demolish their deck because you have the counter to it. What this card does is lets you put some tech cards into your deck that aren't very good against most of the meta or in your deck, but are very good against certain decks in the meta so that you can play this four mana four four, discover one of them for later, and shut down your opponent's game plan with that powerful tech card. This is going to be insane for cards like Theotar, cards like Mutanis, and going forward, other powerful tech options like that that take their place. This card is very strong and what we really need to see in Hearthstone for control decks. Next up here, we got another neutral card, a 2-mana 1-3 called Hipster. Now... What a lot of people might not notice is that this card is a Pandoran. Now, a lot of people haven't been paying attention to this, maybe, but Blizzard hasn't been printing that many Pandorans for a while, and a lot of people have been speculating that that might be because they're leading up to a Pandaria expansion where there's going to be a huge overload of Pandaran cards and the new Pandaran tribe added to the game, which would mean that there's actually balance reasons to not give certain cards the Pandaren tribe. That would make a lot of sense as to why they're not designing as many pandas as they used to, because it's a really beloved race among their players. It would just make sense to give them more cards that have the pandas on them, because people like those cards. So, obviously something big is in the works. They know that their fans like Pandarans, so... I believe that we're about to get a Mists of Pandaria expansion for Hearthstone. Very soon. I have another reason why I think that, but we'll get into that in a minute. For now, let's talk about this card. Hipster is a 2-mana 1-3 with Battlecry Discover a spell from your opponent's class that isn't in their deck. Now, this is very similar to that other card, the 2-mana 1-3. I, I can't remember its name. It got nerfed because of Shadow Step. It discovered a card that didn't start in your deck. This one discovers a card from your opponent's class that isn't in their deck. So it's like the opposite, kind of. It's it's discovering a card that didn't start in your opponent's deck. Now that's obviously a lot weaker. You can build around the other card, make sure that it's going to have a small pool that has what you're looking for in it. That doesn't make a lot of sense a lot of the time because you want to be playing that card. So not playing that card is like kind of weird, except in Death Knight, where you actually have a restriction on deck building to make it so you can't play that card sometimes. There it makes sense. But outside of there, it's kind of a weird card that never really was that good, except for when you're looking for extra value, like in Priest, or when you were abusing it, like with Shadow Step. Like, it's a media, it's it's a decent card. It's not mediocre. Even. It's decent. It's just not, like, amazing. This card, I think, is even weaker than that because it's like so little control you have over it. It's from your opponent's class that they don't have. It is discovering a spell. In my estimation, spells are often powerful enough that it, they can be good. Minions have a lot more low rolls for like neutral minions that are bad. Most spells tend to be pretty impactful, so I think most of the time this will find you something at least decent. But again, like, there were there are other options that do stuff like that, and I think this is just, like, too weak to actually see play in a meta deck. In Arena, I think this is going to be insane, though. 
Speaking of insane in Arena, we have Ghost Rider. The next card in neutral, a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four. This says, Battlecry, discover a spell, and Finale, discover another. Now, if you remember what Finale does, that means if you play this on 5, you get 2 spells. In Arena, that is disgusting. Outside of Arena, that is something, I guess. It's like, uh, if you really want spells, you could play this, maybe. Death Knight might like this. But outside of that, I don't really see what class is trying to take advantage of something like this. Like, Rogue maybe doesn't even have Shadow Step anymore. And even if they did, three mana to discover two spells is like, ugh. Rogue can do so much better stuff. So why are you even thinking about that? So yeah, overall, I think this card is pretty mediocre outside of Arena. But in Arena, I think it's pretty strong. And maybe in Death Knight too. Last up here, we have our last Legendary revealed, the 7-mana 6-6 six, six Legendary Amalgam. The One Amalgam Band. This card is pretty interesting. I wouldn't say it's good until I see the list of keywords that it can get. Like, I don't really know. There's a chance it's insane. Like, if Charge is included in that list, could you imagine? Uh, 7 mana 6-6 six, six with charge and wind fury sometimes? Uh, yes please. But, outside of that, I don't know how good this is gonna be. Like, it is an amalgam. That's interesting. Maybe there's, like, some reason you need an amalgam in some kind of deck. But I don't know how good the keywords, like, dump is gonna be. Maybe some- maybe it's really good. We'll have to see the list. It could be insane. If you only need, like, five minion types to activate all of them, and they're really good, then this is just a really good minion. Especially because Amalgam of the Deep and Mistake are both standard cards, and both of them count- each one as a different tribe, so that means you play both Amalgams of the Deep, you get two tribes already. You play both Mistakes, you get four tribes now. That's giving this guy four keywords, and you only had to play four minions that are the same two cards. That's insane value. It also applies to dual-type minions, as far as I'm aware. You play an Elemental Murloc, then you play another Elemental Murloc. Well, congratulations, you played an Elemental and a Murloc now. I don't think they can count for both, but maybe dual-type minions count for both for this. We haven't really seen that yet with dual-type minions, so we're gonna have to see how that works. I'm assuming that like Nazoth, the, the one from uh, Dark Moon Fair, it's only going to count as one of the types that it is. That's just my assumption. That's for balance reasons. That's what I think it would be. But it's possible that it actually counts for two that would be pretty nice give this guy two stats or two keywords i mean for the price of one minion pretty nice value and maybe this guy is good if that happens i think this guy is like mediocre otherwise maybe kind of decent but i don't know it's just like it seems like a worse cmot to me but anyway another thing about this guy is look closely at his art what do you see in his art? Do you see that face? That's a panda face. That's a panda face, everybody. Pandas aren't a tribe. Are they? Now this, to me, is a pretty clear indication that we're getting Pandaria soon. Because, because there's a very clear implication here that they are treating Pandarans as a race. As one of the tribes that all counts as. Which means that Pandaria is coming, Pandarans are coming as a tribe, we are going to get Monk as a class. It might be later this year, it might be the start of next year, but it's going to be soon. Alright, well that's it for card reviews, now on to the star ratings. I hate to say it, but so far it looks like Climactic Necrotic Explosion is a 2 star card. Harmonic Metal is a 4 star card. Arcanite Ripper is a 4 star card. Screaming Banshee is a 2 star card. Heartbreaker Hedonis is a 3 star card. Band Club, in my opinion, is a 4 star card. Power Chord Synchronize is a 5 star card. Record Scratcher is a 4-star card. Beatboxer is a 3-star card. 
Opera Soloist is a four-star card. Void Virtuoso is a three-star card. Peaceful Piper is a four-star card. Brass Elemental is a three-star card. Starlight Groove is a four-star card. ETC Band Manager, in my opinion, is a five-star card. Hipster is a two-star card. Ghost Rider is a one-star card. And the One Amalgam Band is a two-star card. Well, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. That was my card review for today. Make sure to tune in again when we get some more cards dropped, because I'm going to make new videos on this every time we get a card dumped. So please make sure you're tuning in. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date whenever I release new videos, which I do every week. And I do news updates for huge releases like this. So make sure you're tuning in all week this week because there will be card dumps all week and I will be covering them. Thank you for watching, everybody. Stay safe. Peace.